and welcome back YouTube to another episode of Life in Prison. My name is Zach, and for the ones that are first timers, hit that subscribe button. Help a brother out, fund a felon, you know what to do. Help hit that subscribe button. For the ones that are returning, I greatly appreciate your support, and you already know that I fucking love you guys. So today, what we're going to be getting into is, I uh, had a special request from a subscriber, um, John Road. Pretty sure to support brother, and the request was to talk a little bit more about Mount Olive and Huttonsville, which it just so happens that, you know, out of the three prisons that I was in, these just so happened to be the two maximum security ones that I was at. So, what we're going to be talking about today is prison stabbings and murders. So, I'd only seen one murder happen um, while I was incarcerated, personally. So, it was up at Mount Olive in 2016. So, a dude named Hager, I'm going to do a little rundown. So, there was a child molester, alright? And his name was Hager, right? He was um, he was a toucher. So what happened was Hager was on the way pile because above Mount Olive, every building situated away from each other. Um, instead of normal prisons where you have the dorms, which is all inside one building, uh, Mount Olive is since it's situated on top of a mountain, all the pods are spread out. And then you have the administration building off to the left, um, medical wing, commissary, um, educational place, you know, library. And then going up the hill toward the massive tower, that's, you know, the medical facility and administration. So... In the center of everything is the weight yard. So you got the handball court, basketball court, you got the weight pile, and then you have a massive track that goes around. Um, and then down by commissary, you have the softball fields. So, but with the weight pile, it's, it's different. The weight pile is inside a massive fence itself. So there's one way in and one way out to get into the weight pile. And it's, to get in, it's one of those old school turnstiles, like you go into a subway station. So like one person get in, pushes these metal bars, and spins around to get into the weight pile. So, and then at the top of the fence, there's, you know, Constantine Wild and barbed wire. So you, you're not gonna climb this fence to get in or out of the weight pile. And you gotta realize, Mount Olive being how it is, um, you know, being the maximum security prison statewide in West Virginia, there's a lot of lifers up here. There's a lot of killers up here. So the weights aren't your normal conventional free weights. They're, they're all welded together. So you can't take a single five pound weight and use it. This five pound weight is now welded to these other 15 pounds, you know, it'll be a five welded to two tens or a 10 welded to 220s, you know what I mean? It's 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 to prevent the inmates from picking these things up and hitting people with them, because it happens all the time. So, to get on the weight pile, you kind of have to push weight. So, what happened was, Hager was doing squats, okay? So, for anybody that works out or doesn't, to do squats, you, you more or less need a spot or someone behind you with their arms in between yours, holding you up, so when you go down, if you can't get up, they can help you up. So Hager was doing squats and he had a spotter behind him. Well, Trooper um, Brascom, who we who we called him Trooper, and the reason being is because he was in prison for, you know, killing a state trooper, so that's why we called him Trooper. Um, so there was an altercation um, between two separate parties. Okay, Hager and someone else. Hager had made a comment that he was going to get dude. You know what I mean? Like, sneak him, you know, whenever his back was turned. Well, Hager was a toucher. 
a chomo, child molester, like kids, you know, some, some kitty toucher shit. So the individual that he made a comment toward was getting ready to go home, okay? Like he was about to go home. Well, Trooper um, being, oh, also, Trooper is also a uh, Aaron Brotherhood. So with Trooper not going home, he more or less told his buddy, like, look, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm not going home anyways. Let me take care of this, okay? So mind you, this is back in 2016. I just got onto the yard three days prior to this incident, okay? So... I didn't see it happen. I saw the aftermath. So what happened was Trooper came on the weight pile, tapped the spotter on the shoulder. Hagger didn't know he was behind him. Tapped the spotter on the shoulder and was like, move out the fucking way. So that's exactly what dude did. And reason being is because Trooper had a nice shank about this, about this big. It was a piece of rebar um, filed down. So up in Mount Olive, it's crazy because you'd think with so many killers and murderers and so many killings actually happening up there that they would try to prevent to the best of their ability us inmates getting a hold of these types of things. So um, Trooper commenced to stab in Hagger, you know, more than 20 times from here up. As I said, I've talked about another video, but I didn't really go into detail and post all this stuff. Um, Trooper wanted to take his head off. He, that's exactly what he was trying to do. He was trying to take dude's head off, and he wanted to walk off the weight pile with it as his trophy. So, with that happening, you know, I was up on Stewart in the pod with Callie, and we just hear a bunch of people yelling, oh, he's getting smoked. So, we, you know, we run to the window, see what's going on, and... By the time we get to the window, um, Trooper was already walking off the weight pile with blood all over him. You could see Hagger just laying on the ground. It was just a big mass of red, red. It was just blood everywhere. And we're like, oh man, the CEO's in running down. Um, that's not the first time that someone's actually been killed uh, out there, more or less on the center yard. So Monday, um, there's a... There's a gentleman, an inmate named Mud Day. This was back in 2000, 2015, Manov. So, Monday was an older gentleman. Um, he was killed because he had slapped a counselor, a female counselor, um, out there on the walkway. He slapped the female counselor, and all the CEOs came running, obviously. And they beat, they beat the fuck out of him. They beat the fuck out of Monday. Like, they beat this man right there on the center yard in front of everybody and he ended up dying you know an hour later up in medical and in the paper clipping right in the newspaper article it said that he died from a medical episode now with me working in the medical field that's a vague a very vague answer he died from a medical episode. Well, what episode was that? Could he not breathe because you guys were beating him and was choking him all at the same time and tasing him? Like, they they did they did do it in real good right there in the center yard. There, there's been a lot of backlash from Mount Olive, and reason being is because there's a black inmate named Russell. Okay. He was up at Mount Olive serving a sentence. And he was actually in the hole. Whenever this happened, whenever this attack happened, um, he was actually in the hole. So there's a big federal lawsuit going on against Russell um, with the Department of Corrections. So the COs had purposely put Russell, who was a black inmate, on a all-white pod. But not only that, but there was multiple Aryan Brotherhood individuals on that pod. So for a year, um, a couple of these Aryan dudes had beat him up prior, taken his stuff, said racial slurs. The reason why nothing was happening, though, 
and I had kind of talked about it before with these Aryan Brotherhood dudes being clicked in with these COs. Well, now that I've got the full story, it makes complete sense. So when I say that these COs were really, really with these Aryan Brotherhood people, in 2019, there was a class. Um, whenever you go to CO training, you do this whole program, and then you're released, able to be a CO. Kind of like you go into cop school um, and doing a bunch of training. So in this photo with these COs, they are all throwing up the Heil Hitler salute. What the fuck? You've got COs in a class photo doing the Heil Hitler salute. What the fuck is wrong with the society? These dudes are allowing, these COs are allowing these Aryan Brotherhood dudes to fuck with me. Nothing's being done. So with this last incident, Russell was in the hole, okay? So when you're on the Q's program, which is Quality Life or the hole up at Mount Olive, um, you can either be in the hole, regular hole, segregation, the shoe, you know, special housing unit, do your 10, 15, 30, 60, 90 days hole bin, and then you get out. But if you get sent to the Quality of Life, they can hold you for eternity. Russell was just back there in the hole, and when you're in the hole, one person gets out of the shower at a time, okay? They come to your cell, they strip you butt ass naked, make you squat, spread your cheeks, um, lift up your tongue, they, they strip search you before you go to the shower, and then after you come back from the shower, they strip search you, put you back in your cell, and then they go get another inmate, do the same exact thing, back and forth, back and forth. You get out for showers once every two days, okay? These COs, allowed this man so samples is the inmate that ended up attacking Russell okay so samples was an Aaron Brotherhood he was back there in the hole on the Q's program whenever you go for showers they go by cells okay this cell will go then this cell will go then this cell will go okay well Samples was on the other side of Russell, so there was an inmate in between their two cells. Samples had told the inmate beside him, do not go to the shower. Samples, when he went to the shower, he stayed in the shower. You get what I'm saying? Not handcuffed, nothing. Okay. When you actually get into the shower, the COs actually close the door and padlock that door so that while you're in there, you cannot get out. So Samples, somehow, somehow was still in the shower with a makeshift weapon a shank okay don't know how he got that back in the hole was waiting in the shower for Russell to come out of his cell now there's two COs escorting Russell to the shower and starts stabbing Russell starts beating him up and the COs step back let him do it. Literally are standing there watching this man get fucked up, okay? Mind you, Russell is handcuffed, right? He's handcuffed with his hands behind his back, with his shower stuff on, completely vulnerable. Because they put these long shackles around your ankles so you can't run, and then you're also handcuffed. So, Russell is being escorted by these COs, Samples pops out the shower and starts beating him up and stabbing him. The COs step back. They don't do anything at all. They literally stand there and watch this happen and let it go on. And then they finally end up spraying both of them and taking them both into custody. As I've said before, when I was up there, I knew that the, you know, the skinhead dudes had the COs unlocked because as many shakedowns as Matt Olive gets, you're not going to have pounds of weed, okay? Mind you, whenever the CERT team um, comes through and does these shakedowns, 
there's hundreds of these dudes that sh shut the whole prison down, okay? You know you're about to get shook down because they turn off your water so you can't flush anything. And if you happen to look out your window, there's, you know, a couple hundred of these cert team dudes geared up in rag gear out in the center yard all preparing to disperse into the prison to fuck shit up. So, you're not hiding pounds of weed. Not like that, but they have these dogs, and these dogs can sniff out a fucking marijuana stem that's deep in your fucking anal cavity. Like, these dogs are really fucking trained. This amount of drugs into a prison, there's only one way you can do that, and that's through somebody bringing it in for you. So, now it's honestly, it's coming out more into the news that, yes these COs up at Mount Olive are really a part of these Aryan Brotherhood guys to Huttonsville now. So, Huttonsville is still a maximum security prison, but it's not as violent. And I've talked about it before, and the reason being is because Mount Olive, you have life without parole. So these guys are never going home. But Huttonsville, you have, you know, some dudes there with one to fives, but then you also have dudes there that are coming off of a life sentence. So, you know, there's guys that have been down for 20 years, but they're getting ready to go home. So they ship them to Huttonsville, from Mount Off to Huttonsville, to take some of these courses to readjust to get you out. B1 in Huttonsville, um, I've talked about before, when I was there, was the Baby Raper dorm, the Toucher dorm, the Chomo dorm, and if you was a rat, if you was a known rat, they were putting you on B1, okay? That was like the old man baby toucher dorm. So there's two individuals. Longwell, uh, an inmate named Longwell, had been stabbed. And whenever the CO had came in to the pod um, to see the crime scene more or less, he said that there was multiple stab wounds from Longwell's chest, his face, his arms, and his legs, and he was laying in an abundance of blood. That's all you saw, was just a bunch, a bunch of blood. Um, it was actually his celly, you know, his, his celly was actually the one that ended up killing dude. And you gotta think though, there's a lot of killings and stabbings over the smallest things. Um, I've seen people get stabbed over stamps, you know, owing 50 cents in stamps. If you say you're going to pay somebody, make sure you pay them. As I said, you only have one thing when you go to prison, and you only have one thing when you come out. That's your word as a man. The moment you put your word on something, and you don't uphold what you say you're going to do, now your word is poop. So if you say, good word, this is what you always hear in prison, you always say, word on my mom, or good word. If you, if you say that, and you're lying, now your word is trash, and people really won't be fucking with you as much, because that's the only thing you got. You can have money, you can have a bunch of food, you can have a bunch of power, you can have... You can be big as fuck and be lifting hella weight, but if you if your word as a man is trash, then you're fucking irrelevant. You know, with with DMI more or less, it's some people go looking for trouble. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people that whenever they um, got in a position where they're running shit, what would happen is whenever something would come up, a lot of these dudes would skirt around and try to hold a position because most of the time if you if you're holding a seat right if you're a seat holder where more or less you you command people right you're not going to be one of the ones going off and jaying someone out or stabbing somebody or going to extorting somebody you're the one that's laid back in the corner dictating everything in their head if they held a position then they wouldn't have to go off and do this stuff because they were scared so when I first touched down, you know, people knew who I was, but I still had to prove who I was. You know what I'm saying? Plus, I said, I wanted to make a name for myself. You know, I wanted to go into prison and be like, hey, after I came out, I wanted my name to be set in stone where, okay, white boy never did no fuck shit. He didn't, you know, 
no cowardly acts. You know, he was a fucking soldier. So, as I said before, uh, there's a dude named White. All right, I'm not gonna say his first name. A dude named White that um, he ended up getting poked up on the center yard because he had said some real negative shit about DMI. Well, that's not gonna happen. Where the phones are, it's dark and there's no cameras. So yeah, you, you're gonna get poked up. And whenever you get someone gets stabbed, it's like if you get hit in your lung. People describe the stabbing sound as a chucking sound. It's depends on the blade too. If the blade's dull, it's you hear a lot of popping because that's your skin breaking. Then if you hit a lung, the moment it punctures the lung, all the air getting expelled from that lung out that now freshly wound site, it's a squirting with the air and the blood coming out. This is the story about Dr. Bob, okay? But Dr. Bob is the one that looked like Paul the alien. And he was a baby raper. He was serving a, a big, nice, long sentence for uh, doing some real weird toucher shit. So this is the murder. Um, this actually happened in 2017, September, right after I left. You know, I, I left out... Um, 2016 July and so 2017 September old fucking Dr. Bob had gotten into and this is exactly what I said that things can things that are very very small can turn into very very large things at the drop of a dime and it's you don't know what someone's mindset is okay so Dr. Bob Anderson was playing a Bible verse knowledge game with Parsons earlier in the day, okay? So, so Parsons has stabbed Anderson, Dr. Bob, over 20 times because of a Bible verse knowledge game where Anderson had tried to put a hit out on Parsons, right? So at first, so Parsons had won, okay? He was talking crazy shit. Anderson had then, Dr. Bob, had money, okay? He had money, but he was also tied in with these AB dudes. He was paying them for protection, okay? So this is after he had more or less told them to go fuck themselves, okay? He was trying to watch his back because he knew what would, what was going to happen. So earlier they they had gotten into a, a dispute about Bible verses, okay? After Parsons found out that Anderson had tried to pay someone to put a hit out on him, Dr. Bob was walking the track. Okay, there was um, there was another dog that was up there at the time that actually uh, he recently got out. Wesley Carter, um, love you, big dog. Um, he was up there at the time, and he was out there in the yard when it's happening. So Parsons had went on the track and started following the dude. Dear Lord, someone help me! Help me! And everyone was like. Bro, there's no help for you. You're not going to get... No one's going to get involved in something like that. Like, dude's trying to kill you. No one's going to stop that. And if you do try to stop that, you got to think. If you see two people fighting, okay? Even if there's no knives involved. If you see two people fighting and you try to break it up, now you're going to jail with them. Because you're an accomplice. You're now involved in that. Even if you're trying to do a good deed, you're going to go to the hole for them. Killing someone in prison is kind of worse than killing someone on the streets. Um, you you have more of a possibility of getting life with possibility of parole out here on the streets. If you kill someone in prison, they're going to hit you with that life. Or a long enough sentence where you're not going to get out. So no one's going to help in and jump in, especially if you're a baby raper. Um, I mean, I, honestly, I'm sorry to say it. Some people don't view pedophilia as something to be uh, concerned about. But when you're around monsters, and I say monsters as in when you're around individuals that have, you know, sodomized their own children, infants, babies, um, you know, people have been cut with razor blades just so that they could fit, if you know what I'm saying. Like, very, very disturbing things. And 
you know, to the normal human, it, it angers them. So when you have murder on your mind and you are willing to take it there, it's not anybody, it's not anything for anybody to go and kill one of these guys. And it was a, it was a young boy actually. He was real young. His name was Markham. Um, he'd actually gotten a, he was convicted of murder. He was convicted of a murder, uh, first degree murder. And he was a young boy, real young boy. Um, unfortunately, he didn't get killed. He actually killed himself on that. Uh, unfortunately, um, he hung himself in the cell. This was a couple years back. And, you know, it's sad, especially knowing how young these people are. And yes, you may have taken a life, but you still had you still had your whole life ahead of you. Yeah, you, you might have been in prison, but you still had life, you know. Just because you're in prison doesn't mean that it's only your life that's affected. Now it's your family members' lives are gonna be affected. So if you know, you get a phone call at home saying that your son had been killed in prison. Like, how's that going to make you feel? Because now you, you really can't even see your son, let alone now he's dead. Like, I can only imagine. I, I, I told myself while I was locked up that if anything had happened to my parents, um, you know, anything bad had happened, that I probably wasn't about to get out, to be honest with you. Because that's, at the time, the way I was thinking, it was, you know, my parents are everything to me. And if I didn't have them, then I what am I going to go back to? I have nothing to look forward to. Um, thank God nothing happened. And... I'm out here now trying to do what I got to do. There was um, another killing. Um, there's a, there's actually been a couple going on here recently at some of the jails too. So Simpkins, it was back in 2006, all right? So Jonathan Jordan was uh, Simpkins' cellmate, all right? So Jordan had thought that... Um, he'd be able to kill Simpkins, right, and get away with it. So what he'd done is he'd gotten a cloth belt from the jail because w whenever you go to prison, you get one of those weird cloth belts that has like a metal buckle. So he had strangulated a dude, killed him, and then had set it up to make it look like Simpkins tried to kill himself. Obviously, that didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? They did an investigation like, bro, you were strangled. You didn't try to hang yourself. Now, Jordan's got a life sentence. South, I want to say. So this happened at North Central Region, okay? Back in, this is actually like last month. This is actually October of 2021. There was, there was an incident where two people would end up getting killed at North Central Jail back in October of this year, 2021, October. So three people have gotten stabbed, all right? And two actually died. Anthony Jones died from stab rooms along with William Adams. Both of these dudes end up dying. Um, you know, a dude went on a rampage. And there's another dude named Jacqueline Piles. He ended up dying, but he didn't die from uh, murder. It wasn't homicide or murder. It was um, apparently this... The newspaper article says that it was self-inflicted wounds. They don't elaborate any more on, on that. They're not really going to say anything. So it's just, you know, it, it's up for debate. A lot of these times, the West Virginia... Um, Department of Corrections isn't going to release too much stuff, especially if it's an ongoing investigation. But um, then there was one more that I'm going to go ahead and share with you all right now. So Whitaker, this actually happened in 2019. So Whitaker, this was at the jail. It was also a jail. So there was three inmates that had nothing to do with each other, had never met each other in their lives until this jail sentence, okay? So mind you, all these inmates are in jail for misdemeanor charges, as in they're getting ready to go the fuck home. Was beaten to death, and one of the inmates, Jones, actually knew dude, like I did some prison time with him up at um, Huttonsville. So this inmate was beaten to death 
by three individuals. It was Jones, Johnson, and Lushen. who had ended up beating the fuck out of Whitaker for, you know, for whatever reason it was that they did it. Who knows? Um, only, I guess, them three will know unless they end up telling their story. But three individuals end up beating, you know, Whitaker to death in the cell. And what I can say is there's been this many times whenever... As I always say, when one of us jumps, we all jump. And DMI's got a bad name because we do J people out. Doing that, it's dangerous because say I'm kicking dude in the head and say you're trying to pull dude's leg or this dude's punching him like there's there's a lot of times where people can end up hitting their head and dying, um, brain injuries, people's necks can get broken real easy if you kick them the wrong way and their neck snaps whenever these things are going on we're so blood hungry and it's this it's this release of this hate that we always get out of us of a decision they made at the wrong time um, I'm just lucky and I thank God every day that you know there's certain things that I've been a part of and done where the outcome could have been completely, completely, completely different. You know, you, you, you don't know, going into a fight, you don't know what's going to happen. You can have a game plan in your head, but one move can change everything completely. There's been a few times where I've held positions. Um, I've held top positions before. And whenever I got these positions, as I said, we can make statements. We can... Whenever circumstances need come up and someone needs dealt with, they can be dealt with, but there's a smarter way to do it where you can at least get away with it. A lot of these hothead dudes, they feel like they need to make a name for themselves, for themselves, by making other people go do the dirty work so that now, as a group, people are feared. I want to better myself. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just because this man's going to go and stab that dude doesn't mean you're actually going to go and do that. So putting someone else's life in jeopardy just because you hold that power, because you want to be feared, being the person that go, told him to go do that, like, you don't get no bragging points for that either. Like, my thing always was is, we don't go and look for trouble. There's no point in going out. I mean, don't get me wrong, we did extort some, some baby rapers. You know, we didn't extort the old or the weak. If you was a baby raper, if you fucked kids, or if you fucked with kids, Yes, we're going to take everything that you fucking have, everything that you own, if we can. Because that shit is that shit is not cool. So I always try to get my comrades to realize and understand, like, look, we have a brain for a reason, okay? You can still do this and do this and do this, but think about ways to get away with it. Because if all our people are in the hole, what good are we sitting back there not able to touch anything, not able to make any money, not able to go to school and so you can get your GED so you can be prepared for when you go home because our life isn't here. Our life starts once we hit those streets. You might be this in here. The moment you get out there, you're still going to be this. But you also have a family you need to take care of. You need to take care of yourself. So you always got to think long term. More money, more this, more that. If things get hit and stop, then shit will crumble. You don't want that to happen. So today, as I said, it was just a short little video about a few of the a few of the murders and stabbings and killings that have been going on in West Virginia. This is part one. All right, got a whole another video coming out because there's there's a there's a couple more that I just kind of touched base on. If you hadn't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do it now since you've already done watched the whole video. Hit that subscribe button. While you at it, go next door. Hit the notifications button so you'll be forced to inform. <laughs> Thank you again for your support. I greatly appreciate it. I send my utmost love, loyalty, and respect. Have a good day.